Greetings, Globeheads and Flurfers. You know, the most common question I think that I get from family, friends, and, and just regular people when they discover that I have this channel is why? Why would you even bother to engage uh, people and to, to discuss such a completely ridiculous topic uh, and something as obviously bullcrap as the flat earth. Well, there's a few reasons, and I want to talk about those reasons tonight. First of all, I actually do really enjoy this conversation. I enjoy debate. Um, my my training is uh, I'm trained as a lawyer. I'm I'm uh, I'm a licensed attorney. Um, Although the job I have is a little bit different than, than what your typical attorney does. Um, and I don't say that um, because I think that being an attorney somehow makes me more qualified or intelligent. It, doesn't, it certainly doesn't make me more qualified to talk about science. And if I was going to claim... Uh, that it somehow made me more intelligent. That's already been debunked by that attorney idiot with the globe and the airplane. Um, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I think it's called the simplest uh, irrefutable proof of flat earth or something. And this guy takes a model airplane and flies it around the globe. And look, it's upside down. Anyway, he goes on about how he's really, really smart because he's an attorney. And then he proves that that's net. <laughs> My point is, if I was ever going to try to use that as an argument that I'm smart, that guy's taken that that tool from me. But no, the reason, the only reason I bring up the fact that I'm an attorney is because my my training and my background is I'm I'm kind of programmed to look for evidence. Um, you can make assertions all day. I want to see the evidence. I want to see the facts. I want to see um, where they lead and where the pieces of the puzzle fit. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons why this this discussion is so interesting to me is because I've never seen a single single piece of flat Earth evidence. Um, I've watched a ton of videos on YouTube. I watched a lot of videos that are titled stuff like uh, absolute proof the earth is flat, all the stuff. You, you watch the videos and you're watching and you hear them making all these assertions and you're like, okay, when are you going to start presenting actual evidence like you claimed in your title? Um, so I think the discussion is interesting. I think it's something kind of fun to talk about, but it goes deeper than that for me. I've always been interested in conspiracy theory, um, and I've never been a conspiracy theorist. I've always just been interested in why people would believe uh, these super paranoid beliefs um, that are unfounded or don't have any basis in reality, um, and yet uh, they just they cling to these beliefs so strongly. So there's there, there's a sense of enjoyment in this for me in discussing this topic. Um, the most fulfilling thing for me is the science that I learn uh, really, really fascinates me. Um, when somebody makes a, a flat earth argument and uh, I want to find the counter argument, I go out there and I do research and I learn things. And I've learned a lot of things about uh, science uh, that I otherwise wouldn't know. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. But the biggest thing is, to me, not all flat earthers are alike. There's a lot of different folks out there um, that have, they all say the same things. They all kind of, you had the book uh, in the 1800s by Samuel Raybotham. He's kind of the father of the modern day flat earth movement. We discovered the earth was a globe about 2,500 years ago. And then this guy comes along in the 1800s and he writes this book. 
and there was kind of a resurgence in flat earth uh, belief at that time, mostly theological at that time. Uh, that was like what they called the Great Awakening era, and there was a lot of people returning to um, a more devout kind of uh, relationship with God. There was a lot of new churches that sprung up around that time. Um, and a lot of this flat earth movement was, was from a religious perspective at that time. But then um, Eric Dubay came along more recently and uh, he basically rehashed all of Samuel Ray Botham's arguments and most of the flat earthers just repeat these same arguments that Eric Dubay uh, put forth. They just repeat them over and over and over again until um, they're like a broken record. So they sound the same, but they're very, very different. There's If, if you watch all these uh, flat earth videos, you'll find very, very different um, folks out there with different agendas doing this. There are some true, I believe there are some true believers. There's some people out there um, who just really aren't very bright at all. Um, who believe the earth is flat. There's also some real charlatans out there that I think are smart enough to know um, that the earth is is not flat. Um, but they have lots of subscribers, lots of views, they're making lots of money, and they're not going to change what they do um, despite the evidence they've seen. Um, I've mentioned a few of these before, Mark Sargent and some other guys. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they, uh, they've figured out a long time ago, um, if they didn't know all along, that uh, that it's malarkey, um, but it's their bread and butter. So that's you know, you're never going to tell those guys anything that's going to uh, make them admit the truth. So there's those guys, there's the there's the guys that, that truly believe it. Um, the motivations are, are different for these guys. I was watching a debate um, earlier today um, involving one of the Nathans, uh, Nathan Thompson, I think it is. This guy is, is a, in my opinion, a true believer. He has no doubt but that the earth is flat. Um, I would say that he's as smart as a box of rocks, um, but I actually have a box of rocks, and they have not said anything anywhere near stupid enough to deserve that kind of comparison. Um, the other Nathan, uh, Nathan Oakley, real similar kind of approach to, to Nathan Thompson um, in that very, very arrogant, looks down on other people, maybe a little bit more intelligent than Thompson, but um, but also pretty much an idiot. The, the, the thing that really fascinates me about these guys is their level of arrogance. They, uh, they actually believe that they're far superior in intellect to regular folk um, while demonstrating... A complete lack of understanding of how uh, how the universe even works. Um, they'll try to use arguments. Uh, they'll try to they'll try to actually bring up um, scientific statements and um, laws of physics and stuff, and try to argue based on these concepts while demonstrating that they don't even understand the concept. You know, they'll argue the second law of thermodynamics uh, while demonstrating that they don't really have a clue what the second law of thermodynamics is really even about. Um, so the bottom line for me is that I do not consider... Uh, conspiracy theories to be some kind of just innocent thing where you just say, oh, these people are just, you know, they're just idiots. Don't, 
you know, just kind of write them off, ignore them, don't engage them, um, assuming that while their ideas are crazy, they're harmless. I don't subscribe to that because I do think there's a lot of harm that can come from uh, that level of distrust and paranoia. Now, one of the things that flat earthers and other conspiracy theorists will say if you disagree with them is, oh, you think you can just trust the government? Well, I, I think it's a mistake to trust the government in every single situation, but I also think it's a huge mistake to automatically distrust the government in every single situation, and it can lead to dangers. You know, you have people who, when a hurricane is coming and the officials will come along and say, you know, we're doing an evacuation, you need to leave, uh, there's a hurricane coming, and if you stay, you'll die. Uh, there's people that because they don't trust the government, they will refuse to comply. Um, and, uh, the storm comes and their, ne their bodies aren't ever, are never found. I remember when I was a little kid, um, we lived fairly close to Mount St. Helens. And I don't know if you remember this guy, his name was Harry Truman, just like the president. And he... Uh, he lived basically right at the foot of Mount St. Helens on the shores of Spirit Lake in this old lodge. And he'd lived there pretty much his whole life. And the government scientists were telling him, you know, you need to get out of here. You need to get away from this mountain. It's a volcano. It's going to blow up. And he didn't trust the government. And he refused to leave. And after the eruption of Mount St. Helens, they estimated there were at least 60 feet of mud and ash that ended up on top of him and his house. Um, another thing that comes to mind is uh, is things like vaccines. Yeah, there's risks associated with vaccines or, or any medical procedure for that matter. But people just based on their massive mistrust of government will refuse to take these, these uh, life-saving uh, vaccines or even more important... Uh, will refuse to let their children have some of these vaccines. And what we're seeing is, as a result is a resurgence in diseases that we once had just about completely wiped out. And so um, I, th I think it's uh, inaccurate to argue that, you know, conspiracy theories are just harmless and there's no harm that can come of them. I know that uh, there's people that have gone around, for example, s claiming that uh, uh, Sandy Hook was a hoax and didn't really happen, and, and even the shuttle disaster and things like that. And these kind of things, I'm sure, are incredibly hurtful um, to the families who lost loved ones. Imagine if, if God forbid, your your child was a first or second grader, a kindergartner, and was gunned down in their own school. And not only did you have to deal with that grief from losing your child, but you had these morons running around claiming that it never happened uh, and just denying your 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 pain. I, I, I can't imagine how how painful that experience must be when when people see um, some of these accusations being made and stuff. Um, so those are some of the reasons why uh, why I debate. Or I don't even know if debate is the right word. Um, there's really no debate to be had. Uh, the Earth is obviously a globe. I, I think... Uh, I've said this before, but one of the things that intrigues me is people will spend hours and hours on the internet going back and forth over these, you know, measurements of the curve and the, the, uh, the flat earther will say, well, we, you know, we can see this mountain from here and you shouldn't be able to. And so therefore, um, you know, there's, there's not enough curve, you know, when, when, uh, Oftentimes they'll show you a picture and like, you know, a mountain is 7,000 feet tall on, on flat earth. You should be able to see 7,000 feet of it. Um, 
on the globe, they'll argue that, you know, they'll show a picture where you can see the top 2,000 feet of the mountain and then say, that should be hidden too because you calculate this. And, and then there's arguments that can come up for refraction and all that stuff. And all those arguments I find kind of pointless because... We do know that uh, we do know that things like refraction and stuff exist. We know that because of weather conditions, um, you know, bend refraction can bend the light down. You can see it, it literally see around the curve at times. And so there's there's days when you can see further than other days. Sometimes you can see you know Chicago from across Lake Michigan. Other things you can't. So I think that whole area of argument on on the globe versus flat earth side um is kind of a waste of time to me um because if something's affected by weather conditions and pretty much both sides agree that refraction is a thing that there are uh, effects caused by weather and since both sides kind of concede that um it makes that the re least reliable way to figure out where we live and the and the most ridiculous thing to argue about when you can when you can really look at some very very clear things that just simply prove um there you know we see so many things that are just impossible on a flat earth we see flights uh in this in the southern hemisphere um that take way way f far less time than they should um, if we were living on a flat disc, we see, uh, Australia and, and other places, uh, being, uh, shorter distance across than they would be, uh, on a flat earth. We see the sun rising and setting in places where it can't, um, if it's just circling, uh, simply circling the middle of the disc and that middle is the North Pole. Um, we see all these th things that just beyond the shadow of a doubt prove that we live on a globe, although scientifically speaking, uh, you know, s science doesn't prove things, it disproves things. So, um, the guys that are just talking pure science will, uh, they don't like to use the word prove and I understand that, but, but to me, when you look and you see um, a, a, a sun that rises due east uh, on the equator at the equinox and travels or appears to travel in a str perfectly straight line across the sky and set due west, to me that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt um, at least that the idea of a sun circling above a flat disk is impossible because you cannot witness um, something traveling in a circle for half of that circle, and and uh, and when what the reality you see is that it's traveling in a straight line. It's just it it's, it's impossible. So that's why I get into this discussion. Um, I enjoy it. I do think it's important. I think it's important that people. Um, really look at the world around them for themselves um, and, and really try to understand just beyond uh, the simplistic. Uh, one of the reasons why I haven't been uh, active for a long time, I haven't made a video in a long time, is I was actually um, out of the country. I was I spent several days at a resort on the beach, ninth floor of a hotel, balcony overlooking the Caribbean Sea. Um, really, really beautiful. But as I looked out at the sea, um, it didn't look flat to me. Um, I can't say definitively that I could see curve. And I think that's another thing that people have argued way too much about that doesn't make sense is they'll argue about how far up you have to be above the earth to see the curve. Um, well, the curve is there. It's been measured. Um, there's a guy on the internet named Rory who I like to watch. 
you should subscribe to him too. He's got really prolific. I don't I don't know how this guy must just make videos 24 hours a day. Uh he puts out a lot of content. Um but one of the things that he does is is take pictures of of the horizon at the sea um and then shrink them right to left, compress the photo together. Um, and what you find is when you compress it, um, that curve becomes more visible in the picture. You're not, you're not bending the picture at all. You're just simply put, scrunching everything together. And so you can, you can see that curve that's too subtle to, to see with the naked eye. But as I said, it's, it's perspective. It's there. So we're all seeing it. Whether or not you perceive something is a function of how your brain translates the data from your eye. So I think perspective uh, of things like that, to be able to, to, be able to perceive uh, whether there's a curve, I think that's different for each person probably. Um, but what I do notice is when I, when I sit on this balcony and I'll overlook at the sea, I can... I kind of feel like I can see the curve, but then I understand that part of that might be my mind playing tricks on me because I know there's a curve there. Um, but I can say that to me it doesn't really appear flat. Um, and I don't know how to really explain that. But I do know that uh, um, the fact that just what we see with our naked eye uh, looks flat is is partly just well mostly just a, a matter of how massive the earth is but when anyway when I looked out at this sea um, I would see ships out there on the horizon uh, from my ninth floor room I, I would see ships that I wouldn't see when we were down at the beach level um, because my horizon was further away on the ninth floor. Um, and also, as I was looking out at these ships over there, uh, one thing that really struck me is you watch all these videos where um, the flat earthers will zoom in on a, on a boat and then zoom out, and they, they'll claim that these boats went over the curve, but because they had a zoom lens, they can zoom in on it. Um, and the... In every one of these videos, they show small, like fishing boats and stuff. They don't show big, huge ships. And why that is important is because, uh, as I observed from my hotel, the smaller ship, the smaller boats, the the little fishing boats and stuff, they were too far away to see for me before they ever got to the horizon. So if I'd had a zoom, I could brought them back. But you can't bring something back from over the horizon if it's if it's gone over the horizon, it's gone. I mean, that's just the way it is. But anyway, I hope that I know this video's gone a little long, been kind of a rambling thing tonight, but um I just wanted to get on here and and um and kind of express why I do this. Um I I do have every intent of trying to Put out some better content. Um, I've just been kind of sharing my heart up to this point, and I want to start doing some stuff that's <coughs> a little bit, a little bit better um, quality of video and stuff. Um, so I'm trying to learn some things right now and working on some things to put together um, for you. But in the meantime, I really, really appreciate you uh, you taking the time to just listen to my musings and watch my videos and subscribe to my channel um and uh yeah if you like what i have to say hit like and subscribe and and you'll get more of it um thanks so much and uh have a good night